Great night of fights here on IE MMA. We're in Montebello, California at the Quiet Cannon and we're excited to see what tonight has in store for us. So stay tuned and catch it all on IE MMA. Welcome back, I am here with a wonderful quiet cannon in Montebello, California. We're here with Batiste Mansuri and I'm James Trotter. I'm going to do some announcing for the uh, All-Star Promotions now. Batiste, what do you about these two fighters? Here. Well, you have Brogan Walker, who's uh, a Muay Thai fighter out of Rancho Cucamonga, and her opponent on the way to to the ring now is Yumi Matsumoto, who's from Saxon Shinjira Muay Thai. Saxon's a legendary trainer. Um, their gym is in Van Nuys, California. This is an amateur fight, meaning they wear headgear and shin pads, three two-minute rounds. Now, how much protection is these, the headgear giving these girls? Oh, it's a lot of protection. It's, it's hard to knock each other out with those headgears. Okay, our big announcer for tonight is... Fred South, and we'll take it away to Fred. All the right fight fans, here we go. Three rounds of Muay Thai kickboxing. Two minute rounds. Introducing first out of the corner. She hails from Rancho Cucamonga. She wins in one minute and no losses in one minute, 147 rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Rogan. Surapai, legendary uh, ex Muay Thai fighter, one of the lead uh, authorities in Muay Thai in the United States today. Amazing referee. Giving instructions. Now, what do you know about these two fighters going into this? Brogan Walker has a karate background and a martial arts background. She's been doing Muay Thai for about six, seven years. So. And uh, Yumi Matsumoto is going to basically fight kind of Thai style, kind of straightforward, hands up. Brogan Walker is a little taller, got more reach. They're picking and poking, looking to, looking to find range, but they go right into it. Brogan getting into the clinch and really working the knees. Those things are really getting in and hurt the body. Um, it really takes wind away from people and really wears them out. Now, Brogan looks like the more aggressive fighter in this, in this bout tonight. Yeah, usually usually a shorter fighter wants to get in on the inside, and taller fighters trying to keep the shorter fighter on the outside. But uh, Yumi's trying to get inside, and, and when she does, she keeps eating those knees and kicks. Kind of brawling it up, Brogan going back to those knees and doing a lot of damage. Those things hurt. They wear opponents out. Now, Brogan looks like she's able to hurt her opponent in the clinch a lot more effectively than Yumi is. Mm -hmm. Yumi's kind of Yumi's kind of hopping forward, trying to trying to land that overhand right, and uh, it kind of gets her into the clinch when it happens. Back to those knees, to the body, doing damage. Oh, lands a three-punch combination, Brogan Walker does, and she is uh, pretty aggressive. Third, third going head-to-head. -head. The bro definitely has a reach advantage over Yumi. That was, that was a nice little cut kick when you're stepping forward. You, 
you kick out the leg and it knocks your opponent down. That was a good job by Brogan. Yumi keeps trying to land the right kick. Um, kind of trying to find her range, but really can't get into her groove because of Brogan Walker's uh, aggressiveness. 10 second bell. Brogan using hand foot combination. And that was the end of the round. So, Batiste, what do you think that really needs to do coming into this next round? Well, she's definitely looking, she's definitely looking to land the overhand right. Um, in order to really get that thing to really connect with good power on that overhand right, you got to catch your opponent coming in or you got to set them up. She maybe needs to do a little pump fake in or setting, setting her strikes up. She's just kind of brawling right now. You, you kind of want to get a reaction. You want to get a forward motion out of your opponent to land that overhand right. Now, what does Brogan need to do to continue on this pace? Um, I think she, she should start looking for a knockout, try to aim, clip the chin, settle into her punches a little bit, stay in her stance. Uh, not be so aggressive and try to throw four or five punches, set them up, set the punches up, set up the rotation. And they're brawling again, and, and Brogan gets into that clinch and really starts doing damage with those knees. A lot of flurrying going on. They're up in each other's face, brawling it out. The human team that she's trying to defend herself and try to get inside of Brogan. Yeah, but that's what you got to do against the longer reach, taller fighters. And her arm, but Brogan's arm too, right, wrapped right around her and she can control her quite easily. Yeah, she's beating her in the clinch, the, the Muay Thai clinch, grabbing the back of the head and working the knees. They've been doing that kind of stuff in Muay Thai for centuries. Thai, in Thailand, it's very popular, the neck wrestling. The, one that she has her in now, which is grabbing the back of the head. Those knees right there. Those things do damage. An amateur Muay Thai, you're not allowed. Oh, nice liver kick by Brogan Walker. I'd like to see Brogan kind of slow down a little bit and pick her punches a little bit and set things up a little more rather than kind of fist fighting there. But again, she's doing a great job. She's Definitely dictating the pace of the fight. Yumi's out of position throwing her punches. That's why that's why you don't really see too much power in there because she's not setting it up. Now, what she's she not be, settled. What does she need to do to, to reposition herself so she would have a little more force behind those punches? Same way a football player or a baseball player is going to throw a baseball at you. They're going to settle. They're going to keep their legs apart. They're going to... They're going to torque, wind it up, and turn their whole body into it using your hips. Pivoting your feet on your punches. And uh, there's, there's, it's a little harder to do. It's a lot easier to just touch each other. It's okay to touch each other, but at the same time, once you start touching, you need to start torquing and rotating to, to develop those power punches and power kicks. Now go to our third round. Some of the uh, fans of IE MMA may not be familiar with the music that we're hearing in the background tonight. There's definitely uh, uh, some music going on during the, during the uh, bout. What is, tell me about that music. It, it's traditional Thai music. Uh, the Thais have always been playing this music during the fights. It's tradition there. And also do a white crew. Neither of these two did it, but a white crew is like a, a dance they'll do be, uh, before the fight to honor their trainers and their coaches. It's something that's been going on in Thailand for centuries. Okay, so now go to the third and final round. Uh, Matsumoto needs to score a knockout. She's behind two rounds to one. Um, she needs to find a home for that overhand right. Pretty even exchanges going on. Nothing, they're touching. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, that was a torque took that Brogan through. She set it up, she rotated, and then back again. 
pulling away from the kicks. Throwing the right hook. Manny Pacquiao's famous for throwing that right hook. That left kick to the body that goes into the liver. That takes a, takes a lot of energy out of your opponent. It's a very popular kick in Muay Thai. Matsumoto countering with some hand punches. Not too much steam behind him. Brogan landing the right hook again. Fighting in southpaw. Brogan keeps switching from southpaw to conventional. Back to the back to neck wrestling and working the knees to the body. Changed your mind. Nice left hook. That was a little bit of rotation on that left hook. That was nice power. matsumoto has got a chin. She could take shots. She she keeps coming. She's pretty aggressive. She's trying to stay uh, the There's spot. the overhand right. But you want to catch him stepping into it. You want to catch him committing. She kind of covers up when the punches and kicks are coming at her rather than counter punching off of those. Brogan back to the plump. Back to the knees. Back to hands. Really stealing this round as well. 10 second bell goes. Brogan back to those knees. And there you have it. Well, this is to be a pretty straightforward decision on which way this fight went. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I had it three rounds to zero, Brogan Walker. Maybe Massimo has definitely a lot of heart. She gave a good performance, but I think it's uh, Grogan Walker is pretty effective here. Yeah, she was a lot busier. She was making Matsumoto miss. She did a lot of damage with the knees. Well, just at a moment, we'll have our decision here. Some little respect for Brogan to her opponent. Yeah, she has that martial arts background, that uh, traditional martial artist. They have a lot of respect for the opponents and the trainers. I think after this fight, uh, we'll definitely be seeing more of Brogan Walker in future bouts. Oh, absolutely. She's, uh, she's going to be fighting in uh, Arizona for an amateur title soon. Sometime in March. And we have Fred South with the decision. Well, fight fans, stay tuned. We have more great fights coming here on this episode of IE Internet. Jim, she's going to tell us a little bit how she won her kickboxing fight. Can you tell us what it's like being one of the few girls in this kind of a sport? Um, I actually have a lot of girls at my gym and um, we all motivate each other. <clears throat> and um, yeah, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't I wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. They're calling me up, you know, we got to go for a run, we got to spar, so just the girls sticking together really helps. Now, what motivated you to get into this? Um, my first job was a, a karate job. And my coach there uh, just started t teaching Muay Muay Thai and um, been doing it for about seven years now. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the fight. What was going on in your head? How did you feel? Um, the fight happened pretty quick. Um, I just barely got into my groove third round and then I was warm. I wanted to keep going, but it was a good fight. She could give hits and she could take hits for sure, so she's a tough girl. I saw she looked a little scary and intimidating, so I was like, I wouldn't get in there with her. A bit bigger, yeah. <laughs> 
but you did really well and congratulations. Do you have any advice for other women looking to maybe do the same thing but are a little intimidated? Just keep at it. Um, just be tenacious and keep at it. Well, congratulations, Rogan, and thanks for taking the time to interview with us. No Thank you. Next up we have Beto Sanchez versus James Puncel. So this is weird about these two guys. Well, Beto Sanchez, uh, he's a striker. He's looking to get his knockout. Uh, James Puncel, more of a grappler, going to try to take the fight to the ground, ground and pound. Um, Sanchez trains out of uh, Millennia MMA in Chino Hills, California. Pencel, older side, but uh, definitely has more experience than Sanchez. Cancel on his way to the ring. Yeah, but Sal, as you say, is a little bit older. How old is he? He's 40-something. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Oh, that's a lot older than you. Yeah, it definitely is, but again, you've got fighters like that. You get to work. They're still beating the video guys. You definitely... There's definitely disadvantages in the age factor, some advantages in the experience factor. A lot of these fighters that are a little older training a lot longer so that they can have better technique and more experience. Even with that, Kevin's not great when he's able to be a part of the fight sometimes. But even at that age, do you think it's like a stamina and a risk to keep the mission of the fighter? Uh, well, he looks to be in great shape. He, I saw him way in. He was shredded to the bone. I've seen him fight. I saw him fight three hard rounds. He wasn't breathing hard at all, so definitely in shape. Inside, two out. 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 Inside, you have a ring inside the cage. Yeah, they're doing some uh, boxing in the time as well. A lot of, uh, lot of uh, amateur and even some professional MMA fights are still oh hard in the MMA. Now tonight, Fred Salas is our ring announcer for the festivities. Taking the center of the ring, looking to looking to find his range. Pencil uh, circling to the circling to the outside. He's a southpaw. He's, he's kind of uh, patting at the jab. Comes in for the clinch. They're in an over under tie. 
Throwing some knees back and forth. How much is different with these rigs? With rigs versus ca in a cage. How much of a difference is it going to make for these fighters when they're competing in here? Oh, it, it, it's a world of difference. The cage has its own game and its own style working against their takedowns and takedown defense. Pedro Sanchez in the front headlock. Oh, he broke. Who's going to benefit between these two fighters? Between being up, oh, I think we had a low kick there. Yeah, it was a low blow. Sanchez got a uh, knee in the growing. Referee's going to go ahead and give him a five minute recovery time or until the fighter decides he wants to continue himself. He seems to be taking it pretty well. Referee gives himself a warning. And the action is about to resume. Put the six to right hand, tries to drop a liver shot, but it missed. He's pawing the jab out there, trying to find his range. Superman punch, knocks him down. It might have been more of a slip. Sanchez in the mount of position, flaring. Pencil scrambles out. They go back up to the feet. Sanchez with the front headlock trying to choke. Working the knees of the body in amateur MMA under camel regulation. There's no knees to the head at any time. Sanchez working some knees to the body. Pencil, Pencil uh, snap, snaps him down. Sanchez tries to spin behind. Pencil pushed his hand out. Sanchez switches it off to an arm in. Guillotine choke. This might be it. It looks deep. Pencil trying to escape. No, that's it. It's over. Pencil Sanchez. Definitely the aggressor of this fight. With uh, Pencil. Tapping out. Due to an uh, arm in guillotine choke. The officials are taking some time to uh, check him out, make sure he's okay. That uh, Armin Guillotine choke has been made famous by uh, Joe Daddy Stevenson, the winner of the Ultimate Fighter, professional with, signed with the UFC. Pencil's okay. He's all right. It's not. He might go to. He might worse happen. Pass out for a second, but he's back up and he's okay. Both fighters showing the respect. That's one of the great things about camera fighters. They show a lot of respect for each other. The two true warriors going out there really having a lot of respect for the not just each other, but also the uh, art of mixed martial arts. Absolutely. And we have Fred Salas. He'll be giving us the decision shortly. Stay tuned, IE MMA fans. We have more great fights coming for you shortly. All right. the Hurricane Sanchez to talk about his winning fight. Beto, there was a minute in the ring where the ref looked like they stopped the fight. What was going on? Uh, I had him in a clinch against the ropes and uh, what happened was I was kneeing him and then we started kneeing each other and a knee hit me in the lower belt area and it hurt for a quick couple of seconds so the ref just pulls apart, told me, you know, go to your corner, 
told me I give me five minutes, uh, a couple minutes, and I was like, no, I'm fine. Let's just go back at it. Oh, it was funny. I thought that was what happened, but I wanted everyone to hear it. There was another part of the fight where there's just this huge takedown, and he he tapped ultimately. What was going on in your head? Uh, I had the guillotine. I I, I I I'm a lender. There was such a, they always teach us a cup to chin. We have a guillotine, so you don't let it go. So I had it there. I was trying to finish it from there, but uh, I was using too much strength. And I was like, if he gets out, I don't want to be dead. So I took him down, and I had it. I had it deep. I just, I didn't, I didn't pull on it. I cranked it, and it was just done. How did it feel? It felt awesome. It's my first win. You know what I mean? I, I came off a loss, my very first fight. Uh, I fought a wrestler my first time. It wasn't really good. It, it was really nervous, and you know, it was a last-minute thing. I went through like four opponents that time. It was supposed to be, you know, even matchup, and it wasn't. So it felt really good, really good. Well, congratulations, Beto. Thanks for talking with us. Plenty of more. about wraps it up here for us tonight. We hope you enjoyed it as always and we hope that you'll tune in next week to IEMMA.